Argentina's new president is wasting no time implementing significant changes in his first week in office. He has undertaken drastic measures to reform both the country's economy and politics. Notably, he has reduced the size of the government, terminated numerous bureaucrats, and frozen all public spending. In addition to these measures, he has made a surprising decision concerning the nation's currency, creating a global sensation. This raises questions about the impact on Argentina's future, particularly regarding its currency. Join us as we delve into the details of how Argentina has recently altered its currency. The president, known for his unconventional political approach, is Javier Milley, a libertarian economist who gained prominence for criticizing the previous government. During his campaign rallies and events, he symbolically wielded a chainsaw, making loud noises to emphasize his commitment to cutting down the bloated and inefficient public sector. While some found his actions amusing and refreshing, others were appalled and offended. Nevertheless, he garnered enough support to lead the country. Now, as president, he is translating his rhetoric into action. His far-right administration, comprising loyal followers and allies, has initiated a radical economic transformation. A pivotal announcement was made on Wednesday, when he declared the decision to allow the peso to float freely in the market without central bank intervention. This move promptly led to the peso losing more than half of its value within hours, plummeting from 200 to 500 per dollar. This decision is part of a broader set of measures aimed at reducing public spending by $20 billion, equivalent to 5% of the country's GDP. The objective is to counter the alarming 160% inflation rate. In addition to the currency decision, the president revealed plans to eliminate all subsidies, tariffs, taxes, and regulations deemed unnecessary and harmful. The overarching goal of these radical changes is to stabilize the economy and accumulate foreign reserves. These reserves will be used to buy up all pesos in circulation, replacing them with dollars in a process effectively leading to the dollarization of the country. The president believes this will prevent future governments from overspending and printing money, the primary causes of the hyperinflation that has plagued Argentina for decades. The ultimate aim is to restore confidence and trust in the economy, attracting more investment and fostering increased trade. However, this also implies that millions of Argentinians already living in poverty will encounter increased hardship and uncertainty. The devaluation of the peso will raise the cost of everything, particularly imported goods and services. The removal of subsidies and tariffs will result in basic necessities such as food, water, electricity, and gas becoming scarcer and less affordable. The elimination of taxes and regulations is expected to foster more inequality and insecurity, while the process of dollarization will limit the country's policy options and sovereignty. The devaluation of the peso came as a shock to many Argentinians, witnessing their purchasing power and savings diminish overnight. Prior to the reform, the official exchange rate stood at approximately 366 pesos per dollar, but post-reform, the peso plummeted to about 800 pesos per dollar, doubling the cost of everything. This had a profound impact on the millions of individuals dependent on imported goods and services. The International Monetary Fund, IMF, which had been supporting Argentina with a $56 billion loan, commended the reform as a bold and necessary step. The IMF stated that these decisive actions aim to significantly improve public finances, protecting the most vulnerable in society and fortifying the foreign exchange regime. The IMF believes that their implementation will contribute to stabilizing the economy and laying the groundwork for sustainable, private sector-led growth. The significance of these developments for the future of Argentina and the world can be understood through two main reasons. Firstly, owing to its geography and demography, Argentina possesses substantial potential to become a prosperous and influential country. With a large and youthful population, a median age of 32 compared to the world average of 38, Argentina has abundant human capital and a dynamic workforce capable of driving innovation and productivity. Additionally, it faces less pressure from aging and pension issues, which pose challenges for many nations. Secondly, Argentina boasts abundant natural and cultural resources, providing it with a competitive edge in the global market. Vast and fertile lands yield a variety of crops and livestock, navigable rivers facilitate trade and transportation, and a well-developed infrastructure and high-quality educational system foster development and learning. 
Despite these advantages, political and economic instability, largely attributed to Peronism and populism, has hindered Argentina's progress. The current president aims to overcome these challenges through his reform agenda, potentially unlocking Argentina's full potential and transforming it into a success story. Argentina's economic reform carries implications not only on a domestic scale, but also globally. As the world grapples with a trend of deglobalization propelled by rising protectionism, nationalism, and populism, numerous countries are keenly observing Argentina's radical moves. Despite varying political systems, geographic locations, and economic models, they share a common challenge in navigating the decline of trade and currency volatility. The breakdown of trade poses challenges for countries, particularly those with weak and unstable currencies, making it harder for them to sustain their own monetary systems. This may compel nations to seek alternative solutions, such as aligning with a stronger and more reliable partner, offering a stable currency regime and economic structure. A contentious aspect of Argentina's economic reform is the potential abandonment of the peso in favor of adopting the US dollar as the official currency. President Milley, a long-standing proponent of dollarization, views it as the ultimate solution to combat chronic inflation, which has eroded the value and confidence in the peso. He has openly declared his intention to dollarize the country, asserting that this move would provide Argentina with the stability and credibility associated with the US currency, while eliminating the risk of excessive money printing and increased debt. However, the feasibility and desirability of such a plan are highly questionable. The country lacks the necessary dollars for a smooth transition, with estimates suggesting a requirement of approximately $40 billion to replace all pesos in circulation with dollars. Argentina's net foreign reserves are in negative territory, necessitating additional borrowing to finance dollarization and exacerbating the existing external debt. Economists, such as Elijah Oliveros Rosen of S&P Global Trading, caution against the limitations of dollarization in addressing Argentina's economic woes. Dollarization does not tackle the root cause, a substantial fiscal deficit stemming from low tax collection and high public spending. Moreover, adopting the dollar would strip Argentina of its independent monetary policy, hindering its ability to adjust interest rates and the money supply to respond to economic conditions. This loss of control over essential economic tools poses challenges for Argentina's economic recovery and competitiveness, especially when faced with a contraction of approximately 3% due to the pandemic and ongoing economic reforms. Nevertheless, some experts argue that dollarization is precisely what Argentina needs, contending that it would bring stability and credibility to the economy. They assert that such a move would compel the government to adopt a more disciplined and responsible fiscal policy. Despite polls indicating reluctance among the majority of Argentinians to embrace dollarization, historical mistrust in their own currency due to repeated devaluation, and hyperinflation has led many citizens to convert their pesos to dollars promptly to safeguard their value and prevent the erosion of savings. The phrase, colchon bancario, or stuffing dollars under the mattress reflects the deep-seated mistrust in local financial institutions, leading citizens to keep their dollars outside the formal banking system in foreign accounts, safe deposit boxes, or as cash. As of the end of 2022, Argentinians held over $246 billion in foreign bank accounts, safe deposit boxes, and mostly undeclared cash, constituting over 50% of Argentina's GDP, and surpassing $487 billion in current dollars for 2021. This suggests that the scarcity of dollars is specific to the Argentinian state, as citizens already possess enough dollars to transition to dollarization without the need for additional borrowing from abroad. Convincing the public to repatriate their dollars and deposit them in banks would require restoring trust and confidence in the financial system. Proponents of dollarization point to its success in other countries, including Ecuador, El Salvador, and Panama, where it significantly reduced inflation and stimulated economic growth, investment, and trade despite initial high levels of debt. Another noteworthy aspect of Argentina's economic reform is the role of cryptocurrency, particularly Bitcoin in the country's future. President Milley has expressed interest in cryptocurrency, hinting at the possibility of following El Salvador's example in adopting Bitcoin as legal tender. However, Milley's stance on Bitcoin is not definitive, as he has expressed both skepticism and admiration for the digital currency depending on the context. 
In a conference in 2022, Milley highlighted the problem with cryptocurrencies, citing their lack of legal recognition and intrinsic value, labeling them as too volatile and speculative for use as money. Yet, in a different interview, he praised Bitcoin as a response to the alleged central bank scam, accusing the central bank of creating inflation and debt by printing money and manipulating interest rates. Milley sees Bitcoin as a means to restore the power of money to its original creator, the private sector, emphasizing its transparency and accountability compared to the central bank. There is a possibility that, without fully dollarizing, the Milley administration may ease regulations, making it simpler for people to access various currencies, including cryptocurrencies. This could involve opening the market to free currency competition, enabling individuals to choose the currency that best aligns with their needs and preferences. Milley's inclination toward reducing state power implies a potential relaxation of current regulations on the purchase of assets like the US dollar or cryptocurrencies. What do you think about this move? Do you think dollarization is the solution to Argentina's problems? Share your thoughts with us in the comments section below.